Um, but can ask question again. <laughs> okay, um, you want me to start over? Or? Yeah. Okay, um, my question is, um, if, um, um, <laughs> if, um, Inky was saying here to be, um, ruler over the earth, and, um, I knew saying in Lil ruler over the skies, correct everything, my question is, the Inky say you redeeming himself by sending his son Murdoch, showing that he can he can do things as said to be done, or did Anu send you, my master teacher? Uh, Anu. Anu sends Inky, and Anu sends me. Inky couldn't send me anywhere. <laughs> because, though I am spiritually related to Inky as his son, you know, I reject everything Inky stands for, because he opposed Anu. And it was a strong decision because I was conceived through a reptilian wife of Inky as a disagreeable, a warrior, a defender. And I had to change okay, my whole genetic structure recalibrated so that I could work on behalf of a new, but act as a defender of the innocent at the same time. So I had to be given the ability to kill when killing is not in the Anunnaki's nature. Thus it was necessary to be born to eat who was a reptilian, that I'd have a reptilian mentality as well as an Anunnaki's mentality as far as agreeable, ya, yeah, and disagreeable way. I had to have both of those attributes because this is what you have. You have both an agreeable nature and a disagreeable nature sitting in this room. And I don't mean there are some agreeable people and some disagreeable people. Everybody sitting in this room has agreeable in them and disagreeable. Everybody in there has a little devil in them and everybody in there has a little God in them. In order for a being to come to you, to raise you up, they've got to have the kind of nature you have so that you can't trick them, because you're very good at it. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> Nothing to this, just Don't want to triple. <laughs> Anything else? The brother from Washington came down a long way, and people from Washington, I assume, are in the house. <laughs> Y'all out here, he's a very good job, he's a good teacher. I know y'all learned a lot. It makes me feel good to see uh, young brothers coming up, because nothing is sadder than seeing uh, a purpose destroyed, because maybe the leadership harbors and controls all the information for themselves in order to look heavy. And then when they pass on, there's no one to pick up that baton and keep running. It's good to see that these young men are coming up, and I'm hoping to see some young sisters get up here. Not unless young doesn't mean nothing to me, though. Remember, you know how I was, you know young has nothing to do with age. Means, means in stages of learning. I want to see some of these young sisters get up and also teach and carry this word out, because I know you know what time we are. I know you can see the world and conditions of the world. Needless to say, the clock is ticking louder than it ever ticked before. And time is running out. And I'm not going to preach doomsday. I'm not going to tell you that the end of the world is coming. The end of a kind of world is coming. The end of a kind of rulership is coming. And it's high time for it to go. So that the new world, and not new world order, but the new world can come into place with where love rules and not emotions. Right? What else you want to talk to me about? Go ahead. Recently, me and some brother was building on the idea of uh, why is it we have to get back to a state of wapu, and we were looking at it as a uh, neutral state. Okay, and um, I was thinking on that. I'm sorry, I, you looked at it as a neutral state. Yeah, we looked oh, at it as okay. a neutral state. Okay. Saving the Wapo as a neutral state. Okay. And, um, Whatever I that means. <laughs> I didn't hear you. I don't know what that means, but I'm going with you with time. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Okay, but um, I was looking at that and I was thinking, um, well, maybe uh, while we're here dealing with this society, we have to uh, focus more on our positive nature and suppress the uh, disagreeable side of us 
so that we could kind of like balance things out. Because I, rem I remember when you were saying that uh, our planet has been surrounded by a almost disagreeable crystal-like energy thing. And um, I was thinking that if we were to focus more on the positive, on our positive nature, suppress the disagreeable, will balance things out and allow us to be able to cope with the things that's going on in this society now. But later on, once we establish uh, our state of Milwaukee, we would then be able to get back to that neutral state and then exercise both our agreeable and the disagreeable using uh, sound right reason. So is, is that what's going? On? Is that what's going on? Where we? Is that why we have to focus more on our well, positive nature? That probably was a little heavier than what I would say. <laughs> uh, to me, uh, sound right reasoning is already in each of us. What has happened is all of our reasoning, our sound judgments, and most important, right decisions, has been overlaid by theatrics. In other words. They took out reason and replaced it with belief. And in belief, if you try to reason out what you believe, you're usually called a blasphemer or a troublemaker. If you belong to a religious denomination, uh, let's say Christianity, for instance, for starters, and you're a devout Christian, and someone attempts to assassinate the Pope, you follow? You say that's a very sad thing. That's a very sick thing to do. That's how you see it. And that is a way to see it. But in the Waffle, the next way to see it is, why is the Pope ducking? You follow? Why would the Pope attempt not to die if the greatest of all glories is to be back in the bosom of God? And if you are the Pope, you're about as close to <laughs> the bosom of God as most or any man could possibly be you have to ask see what Nuwapo does is it raises that kind of question through reasoning that bothers people because it says why is the Pope driving around in a bulletproof vehicle if him and God is tight <laughs> why is he trying to tell me to be good in order to go to heaven to be with God, and he don't want to go to heaven. <laughs> Billy Graham passed out giving a lecture, and he's on his fourth collapse. His fourth collapse, and he is fighting to live. He is trying to live. He's got all kind of tubes in him, and breathing machines, and heart pumping machines, and he wants to live. I would assume, get with me, I would assume that Billy Graham would want to die if Billy Graham believes in heaven. If he believes that when you die, you go to God and you go to heaven, why is he trying so hard to stay here? And the first thing that happens to most of the people in this room, once they become frustrated is, I don't want to live. If they're religious, they I want to go to God. <laughs> Why is the Pope and Billy Graham and a multiple amount of other religious leaders, including my beloved brother, Minister Louis Farrakhan, standing around with a bunch of bodyguards, standing around, like, why doesn't he want to die if he believes in heaven? I don't believe in heaven. <laughs> so I know some niggas can stand up with a gun right now and pull the trigger. So I got to learn to duck, because I don't believe. <laughs> I don't believe in that too. And I'm not going to teach you to be so God-fearing that you don't have enough sense to duck when that nigga stand up with that gun. <laughs> but the men that say that they believe that there's some heavenly abode that we all go to, and that God is there waiting to embrace us and his son meets us on the way through the light. Why are they trying not to get there? This is what Nuwapo is. So it's, no, it's not about Nuwapo being neutral. Nuwapo is a, that dormant 
presence of divine in each individual that makes you question everything you are about to do, be it good or evil. When you're about to do something and it's wrong, and you know it's wrong, something says to you, now you know this is wrong. And then something else says, but it's fun. Everybody that gets ready to bungee jump, everybody. While they're tying this thing on the ankle, somebody, a voice in the back of their head says, now you know this is some dumb shit to get ready to right? stupid now. Right? And as they get near the edge, they say, you know, I'm telling you now, this is real stupid. And as they look over the edge, they back track the rubber all the way back to the ankle. And something says, I'm giving you one more chance to think this out. Now this is stupid. And then they jump. <laughs> and after they and after they've defeated that divine awareness in them, jumping becomes fun. It becomes a recreation. It becomes a ritual. Then they want to try something else, Gary. Once you coat over or blot out that Nuwapo in you, and this is done through concentrated effort, it's done through words. It's done through gestures. It's done through the media. When I was talking to some people yesterday, and I was saying, I want you to all to think about this for a minute. Everybody complains about people talking about them behind their backs. You know what I mean. Someone, let me talk about me behind my back. I don't want nobody to talk to me any other place but behind my back. Because behind my back is my face. Behind my face would be the problem. So if someone said, I'm talking about you behind your face, then they're back there. But if they're talking about you behind your back, then they're standing in front of you. Now that may sound silly, but uh, whoever has taught us to accept this ass backwards thinking has succeeded in tricking us to think the way they want us to think. And they tricked us into fighting Biggie Smalls against Tupac right. and had them really thinking they were gangsters. Right. I mean, they really think they're gangsters. They make the faces, they make the videos with the hats and the guns and they walk in the clubs like the Godfather and then they shoot each other. And I think this Bible says, as a man thinketh, so shall it be. These people think themselves into their own destruction. But what type of tricks are used to make us susceptible to that type of thinking is what's frightening. How easily is it done? I remember talking to y'all months ago when kids were still wearing baggy clothes, and I said, pretty soon they're going to be fitting clothes. Yeah. They're going to tighten the clothes up. Sneakers has got to go. Lugs are in. After lugs comes in wing tips. Pretty soon the women are wearing tight clothes and wigs and nails and lips and everything because it's money involved. It ain't about nothing else but money. Now how is it, how is it that they can have 90% of the people on television you see today wearing velvet? Because somebody decides it's time to bring in velvet. And now people are wearing Go. And they decide next month, it's time to bring in satin. People be wearing satin. That's because you have given up that Nuwapo in you. You, list, you open your eyes and you digest things, and what you digest is able to change the way you feel and think. It actually goes against your better or best judgment. You see what I'm saying? And that way they can say stuff like, you can't make up a word like overstanding because it's not in a dictionary. And I say, well, there's no diction in the dictionary either. It's just definitions. <laughs> and, and I can, if you got uh, an understanding, an overstatement, I can have a overstanding and an understanding. 
Is it bothering you because you knew one day I would figure out that this Bible and the Quran, they give us a great understanding. They have a lot of knowledge in it. A lot of wisdom in it. And a great understanding. But the only being or beings that was here before it, that would overstand it, you follow that? Right. Or overview it, or write it, would have to be God. Right. Mortals would be given it to understand it, to stay beneath it. But God was there when it was happening. And that's why it's called mystery. A mystery prefix my story. That's why they don't want to ever call it a history book. And you can tell them, well, because Abraham was a Chaldean, and Chaldean is a geographical place on the planet, and he's back in time, then this, if I read the story of Abraham, I am reading the history of a man. So this is a history book. No, 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 this is the holy book. <laughs> I said, well, okay, then it's a holy history book. <laughs> okay, it's a history book. Now, what does the history have to do with what I'm doing today? Nothing. So why are so many people caught up in this history book? Because it gives you the key to controlling the emotions of people. It gives you a word, a word that I, I, I greatly dislike, believe. And why I hate the word believe so much is because when people get to talking about you in front of your back. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing they do in most cases is say, you know what I think? I have an opinion here. That's what they say. I think, well, Jesus is supposed to come back and get us. <laughs> Say, uh, you believe that? That's what I believe. Well, I choose not to believe it. Then they say, well, you're a blasphemer. I choose not to accept the title of blasphemy. <laughs> you're a cult. I choose not to accept the word cult. <laughs> you're crazy. I choose not to accept the word crazy. See, the moment I can instill in you a belief, an unconfirmed fact, then I can point at the whole Chinese nation, label them, and call them the devil. And because you want to believe it, you will. You won't investigate because I think when I said, excuse me, um, are there black devils? Eyebrows raised up this far. <laughs> no, he ain't. No, bruh, bruh, Esau is not going to go there. <laughs> so, and I said, yes, I am. Because that's Nuwapo. That's reality. When you go there and say, are you going to tell me that all black people are good? and all white people, Chinese people are bad? You gonna tell me that you have never met a black devil? You, can anybody in here tell me that you've never met a black devil? Someone who's black, I mean bongo bibber, and <laughs> say that he doesn't have the devil in him? Or her? Come on with it if you can. So do you know what that would make us? And we persist in that doctrine? What? Hypocrites. But religion teaches people to be hypocrites. Because it teaches you to love your neighbor if they belong to your same faith. Now that doesn't add the last chapter. It basically says, love thy neighbor as I love thyself. That means, being I'm a Christian, anybody who's not like myself, I don't have to love. It's a little tricky, but as we listen, those things trick 
our minds, and then it feels all right for me to say, well, if I am a Muslim and you are a Christian, it's all right for me to blow up the World Trade Center. Because I believe that you are a bad person. Because you do not believe what I believe. You see where it's ruled us? Yeah. But when I knew, and the rest of your guardians, what you might call angelic beings, angelos, start to approach, you had to be reprogrammed as a being. You had to be prepared for beings that when they talk to you, they talk straight at you. They don't talk in belief. They don't talk in approximates. They don't talk in parables. That's why I look at the Quran, it starts in chapter 2, it says, and Allah has a parable for you. And you go, they use the word method, the likeness is the word they really use. And you say to yourself, the almighty, powerful, boundless God of all the universe has to speak in parables. Can't he just say, don't do that? <laughs> Does he have to do something like, uh, the doing of that in accordance with the results of the doing of a data <laughs> could result in a very tragic, this say nigga don't do that. <laughs> it would be a heck of a lot simpler for me. The Quran would be less pages, more people would read it, and things would get off. <laughs> but when, when you open this book here to the book of St. John's, let me see what it says here. It's a nice little book. <laughs> oh, no, it's still a nice book. <laughs> it says here, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him there was not anything made that was made. <laughs> in Him was the light, and the light was the light of man. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. <laughs> Why is it necessary to do all of that? Let me, let, me, let me see what he was trying to say. There was a beginning. And there was a word, a word spoken, spoken in that beginning. And that was God. And the word that was spoken was light, and the light made light. That's why it is man. Simple. Why does God study Shakespeare? Why does he have to emulate Shakespeare? Why is it that God does not want every individual to pick up this book and get a clear understanding of it? Why must we have people to come along and give us tafsir of the Qur'an, interpretations of things. Why isn't the Qur'an so clear that everybody that picks it up would understand it? The Qur'an tells you it has no intentions of being clear. It starts off, Alif, Lam, Mim. Three letters. Then it goes, Zalik al-Kitabu la rayba fi hudani muttaqeen. الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزق لهم ينفقون. Sounds nice. Most y'all going, what is he saying? Let me tell you that most Arabic-speaking Muslims are also saying, what is it saying? And they say it in Salat, and they're still saying, because I did it for 50 years, not 50, 40, before they clicked the light on. Said, what is it saying? So you go back and say, brother, what does alif, lam, mim mean? So the three letters, A, L, and M, they're the initial letters of the Surah Baqarah of the Quran. What do they mean? They'll say, nobody knows. Yes. Any, any ex-Muslims in there? Yes. Don't be ashamed to hide now. You know you are. <laughs> All I do is yell out, salam alaykum when I came in. Y'all said, what <laughs> no. They don't know what it means. Yet, 
the Muslim world will hold up the Quran and say, this is undisputed guidance. Dalik al kitabu la rayba fi. Dalik this al kitabu book la no rayba doubt fi in it. They literally open it with there's no doubt in it. And then when you ask them what those, those what does those three letters mean, they say, I don't know. <laughs> and somewhere along the line, they have not made the equation with I don't know and I wish I did know with doubt. What does that mean? It means that the initial writer knew that anybody who started after that and called it unquestionable or undoubted was a believer. Mm -hmm. Thus they call themselves mu'minun, or mu'minat, and mu'min. We are believers. The word mu'min doesn't even, believe, doesn't even mean believe. Come on, amana meaning, amana meaning faith. And faith is damn near as bad as belief. <laughs> but they still ask me to subscribe to something that's not been confirmed. <coughs> you see that? But as we approach the time, or what they refer to as the information age, we are being informed by our beings or ancestors, or as I often would say, descendants, because they descended. They are triggering you now. They are opening you up where you have the ability to be prepared for their presence. Because in the state of mind that most Christians and Muslims are in, if Jesus came out the sky, they wouldn't know what the heck to do. They're waiting and they're saying, the reverend is saying, I'm telling y'all that Jesus is coming now, soon now. But if Jesus walked into their church, and of the Ethiopian Baptist church, and Jesus had blonde hair and blue eyes, which is the kind of games that God likes to play, or walked in a white church and had a big old afro, <laughs> which is the kind of games God likes to play. But he like it now. He like he got we got away with games. We can go into God's games if you want to. What would happen if he walked into the church of the Black Madonna right now in Atlanta and he had blonde hair and blue eyes and said, "I am uh, Jesus." <laughs> they would throw him out the church. <laughs> And he walked into a KKK church. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know it's true. <laughs> and had a big old boop boop be doo afro. <laughs> big old Michael Jackson afro about this. And said, I am Jesus. They would throw him out the church. Well, they would have, no, I think it's a little biased to say that they would crucify him in the KKK church, but they wouldn't crucify him in the black Muslim church, because the black Muslim church is equivalent to the KKK church. The same ignorance prevails. Whether you want to accept Farrakhan as the Grand Wizard or not is your business. But anybody with any intelligence see that he is just as dangerous as the Grand Wizard in a philosophy that teaches people to hate each other. When nature does not segregate in what I call God's games, the people right now in Canada that are buried under ice and living in shelters by the thousands are not really concerned with their religious doctrine or dogma right now. Most of them are concerned about heat and a sandwich. <laughs> Some warm clothes and a place to sleep and a sandwich to eat. You follow me? And they would share that sandwich with a white person or a black person, anybody would share because nature, Reverend, nature is bringing the reality to us. Because nature doesn't segregate. Humankind is way past their limits on the planet. You have supposed to have been gone ever since you started taking needles or vaccines to survive. When you have to immune your body against nature, when a child gets all these vaccines, nature is basically saying, I want y'all out of here. 
I want y'all off my planet, out my house, because y'all are a menace to each other, every animal, every tree. I want y'all out. So now when the baby's born, the doctors tell them, you must get at least, is it 16 shots, I think we talked about before? Yeah. Before you're 16 years old, or you have any of a number of diseases that would kill you. Who is providing these diseases? God. There'd be no diseases if God didn't want diseases. Are you hearing me? Then you say, there'd be no AIDS if God didn't want it. You say, well, some men, they went into a laboratory and they experimented and they came up with this germ. Yeah, but God gave men the intellect to go into the laboratory and God made those type of germs that could come together and be that deadly and designated the time for it. You know how I know that? I know that because you believe, believe in this Bible. And this Bible says, according to your belief, that the people in Sodom and Gomorrah were homosexuals. And they didn't die of AIDS. So what happened? God got a new idea? <laughs> Blowing up homosexuals and destroying cities ain't good enough? So he came up with a bacteria? Why aren't you looking at it that way? when they say AIDS is a homosexual disease. AIDS is a man-made, genetically engineered virus that was either accidentally or deliberately introduced into the world's population. AIDS is not a homosexual disease. AIDS is not a venereal disease. AIDS did not originate from the green monkey. AIDS is not prevented by the use of condoms. And AIDS is not likely to ever be cured by a vaccine. The reverend. This is Jerry Falwell, the moral majority of Billy Graham and Reverend Price and Reverend Swagger and Reverend... Be oh, he wouldn't say that. He got a little sugar in his own shoes. <laughs> most of, but most of them are saying that God brought AIDS into existence to eliminate homosexuals. And they go back to Genesis and say, God sent angels down from heaven to eliminate homosexuals. Thousands of years ago, he had to use a method of blowing up the city. Now God uses germ warfare. Doesn't that sound like God belongs to the United States Marine Corps? <laughs> <laughs> because thousands of years ago, or hundreds of years ago, the First and Second World War, they were blowing up people. Now people came back from Desert Storm and they're complaining because of germ warfare. So are you trying, please listen what I'm saying. So you're telling me God used bombs like in Hiroshima and Nagasaki a long time ago, and now God uses AIDS during warfare like they did in Gulf Greece. Don't you see that some man wrote this and he has God stepping down through history with him? <laughs> and he has, he has modernized God's judgment up to the level of his, and he can't even take God beyond his level because it ain't God writing it. And if it was, you'd be able to go into this book and find something in here, or the Quran, the Bible, or the Quran, that is non-earthly. It would be a cue to you that this is from somewhere else. But you can't tell me anything in these books that are not related to earth. Now when they tell you and me about, this, 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 is not, this is not really funny, but hell, Betty Shabazz already had hell. Now if she was a wicked woman, what would she be getting being she got burnt to death already on this side of things? You hear me? What would be her judgment? Would God have to come up with a new system, a new kind of fire? But in here, Fire is described as sulfur, fire and brimstone. Go into the Greek and research, it uses the elements of the planet. And all of us are familiar with fire in its many forms. Right? Right. And oxygen is needed to keep it burning. Right. God speaks about rivers in heaven. Hydrogen and oxygen is in heaven. The tree in the garden, it had to grow before Adam made it. Now did God come down with some angels 
and plant a full grown tree in the garden for the sole purpose of testing Adam and Eve? Or did they plant seeds in the garden and wait for it to grow? <laughs> Listen to me, you right now is not. God came down to earth where there was a garden and no tree. He plants a tree, nurtures the tree of good and evil. Let's it grow and then send some innocent children he created who he knows don't have nothing inside their head. And let's them walk up into the tree. And a snake, who he obviously created on, because he created yeah. He had the same way he won like this, who was the most subtle of all the beasts of the field. First of all, snakes are not beasts of the field, but <laughs> well, uh, no. But anyway, let's just keep going on. The snake is around the tree waiting. Here comes the young Eve. No offense to women. She was dumb in so she was dumb in so far as she didn't know anything. There wasn't nothing to know. Ain't nothing was here. Come here. 
And you gonna go yes. <laughs> you talking about sending your children somewhere being unprepared. I can jump from the Old Testament to the New Testament and come up with the same kind of unprepared child of God. Because Jesus was like, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass by me. Not a, I will now, you know, I know I'm kind of you jump, but if that, you know you know what he was talking about? He was talking about the crucifixion. Jesus did not want to die. Which means the whole story of Jesus being born and knowing he was going to die was a lie. Because if Jesus was born the Son of God and knew he was born to die, he would not have said, Oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. He would not have ran when they were trying to catch him. Your father? If he knew this from birth, why was he afraid? What do they mean by, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If God's plan was for his son to come down and die for our sins, his son would have been a willing sacrifice, something they stole out of Abraham's story and Isaac. But his son Jesus, if you read the Bible, did not want to die. Like the Pope. <laughs> Now, why Jesus didn't want to go back to his father? They said that he fell in the garden and he sweated blood. Homeworld was really going. Oh. I want to see one of y'all people in here bend down and pray and sweat some blood. You know how hard Homeworld had to be praying to change sweating to blood? But this is think day and time. This is reality time. And this may not sound or sit right with your fancy, but until you can prove it otherwise, then you're going to have to deal with it. Until it shakes that spell of ignorance that is making us hate each other all over the world. And we the people, we're supposed to do something about the people that rule us that don't have all their marbles. Whether they rule us from the pulpit or Congress, wherever, we got to check them out. And we've got to get to the point where I, please don't get angry at me, where you're doing what I'm doing to people, and you tell people that's ahead of time. Don't get angry with me because I'm not a believer. Don't get angry because I'm not spooked out. Give me some soft, concrete answers. And when I finish talking for a little while, I will ask that brother right there to step up and sit over there so I can take that seat. And I'll let any one of y'all who want to come up here, who say you Jesus, or say you uh, Muhammad, and you want to get up there and talk to us so we can ask you some questions, you can have this here. But don't get mad, because every time I ask questions, people get mad at me, because I go directly at you. I don't hold no punches because I'm dealing with the one thing that anybody or nobody can tamper with, and that's my soul. That's all I got left. They ain't took it. destination in paradise on the right or left or beneath or up wherever next to God I am going to question you because I'm not going to spend the last days of my life sitting in a church or a mosque or synagogue humming with your ass to die to find out it ain't true I want to know ahead of time and if you can't prove it to me don't be angry because I'm not a believer and if you want to say I'll go to hell then hell I'll go to hell but I'm not going to no ignorant heaven. And to add to that, if the kind of people like Mother Teresa, the Pope, and the religious men I met in the Islamic world, if they ain't heaven, I don't want to be there. I don't want to go to a place where you sit down forever and do absolutely nothing. I don't want a couch with rivers flowing beneath it with angels running around feeding me. I don't want to do that forever. I'd rather struggle on, on earth trying to get a job than to sit in a, tree, in a playground and do nothing but look at flowers all day. You can do that in the insane asylum. The nearest I've ever seen on earth to the heaven is an insane asylum, where a bunch of people are sitting around in a day room with clean clothes and nothing to do. They 
God promising you when you die, you are going from insanity into an insane asylum where God will be with you, and that makes it okay. <laughs> well, I'm not that kind of fellow. So that's why I sit back and I look at this and say, well, let me go on and talk about this. And if the reverend can defend himself, I'm with him. If he can, he gets mad, he just have to scratch his ass and get glad. <laughs> Gonna mess up my soul because he's confused. <laughs> <laughs> he put, to keep some some oil in his Cadillac. He ain't doing it to me. Right. You understand? Right. Let's do it now. And the woman <laughs> said to the serpent, "What's she doing? She's talking to the snake. <laughs> if I was walking down the street talking to a snake, where would they put me? <laughs> <laughs> things, things that make you go." <laughs> He, he said, now first of all, he's talking to her. This is women for you. We, and she includes us. She didn't pull us in and Adam somewhere drunk probably. He didn't know what the grapes would do to him. He just ate the grapes and got drunk from us in him. That's what most of us men do, we don't know. Y'all gotta forgive us. You know, when women get together, they call us dumb, we dumb. <laughs> And so, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. That's all. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not touch it, neither shall, you shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, neither sh you shall die. Die. God told Adam and Eve, or Adam or Eve, or even as she incorporated that. <laughs> Don't touch this tree. All the other trees you can touch. This one here. Don't touch it. Because the day you touch it, you're going to die. die. The word here is mut in Hebrew. Dead. It's not allegorical. Rare. It's not spiritual. The Hebrew word is mut and means dead. dead. <laughs> Not, not, you know, like not fucking moving ever again. Cease breathing. <laughs> Adding, your name is John. They add easy like John on the end of it. Dead. Yeah. You got to be real. That's what it says. Dead. Now God said, if you eat that stuff, I'm gonna kill you. Yes. You got me? Now that's clear to me. <laughs> you wouldn't have to tell me that twice. Not God. You don't have to tell me that once. I said, I got you. The serpent said, I said, who are you, man? <laughs> and how do you get the balls to even question the big thing of the cheese? I want to know who you, who are you? I wouldn't be questioning God. I would be questioning the serpent. Now, one time in there, she started to say, yo, man, who are you? That's right. <laughs> Why he can't kill you? Why can't God kill the devil? for introducing them to the fruit and introducing them to disobedience right. to God. Why is it that God can't kill the devil? Did you ever ask yourself that? Yeah. You know why you don't ask yourself that? Because that question walks hand in hand with the question is why is there evil on the planet? Right. And if God didn't want all this corruption and evil and hate and racism, couldn't he? And shouldn't he? Just go poof and be gone and it just be the most loving, beautiful place. Why must the rose die? Why must the rose die? And why must it have a thorn? Why must I be deceived by nature when I see a rose? And I go, oh, that's such a beautiful the first time. Oh, that's such a beautiful flower. And I love her so very much. That I'd like to rip this beautiful flower. <laughs> to give it to her and show her that I love her. <laughs> and so I reach down in my loving concern for her at the base of the rose and go, ouch. <laughs> God damn. Why must 
the rose have a thorn? Why must the tomato spoil? Why must the racing horse break his leg? I will speak to you of a time when your destiny lies. of God. So the only thing he could be talking about at this point is inheriting the evil side. So the way to become God is to become evil. That's what your Bible says. And I'll read it again for y'all who don't understand or overstand or in between stand what I'm saying. <laughs> Verse 4 of Genesis chapter 3 says, thank you very much, John. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. No, the devil is not scared of God. No, right? right? He's not scared of being that makes thunder and lightning and earthquakes and rainstorms and parasites and diseases. He said, you ain't going to die. He, he, this is a powerful individual here. To buck God's power, would you? No. He's doing it. You ain't going to die. And that again goes on. He says for, but it means because. Because God does Let's just say, because God knows that the day that you eat, <laughs> you have that, at that day, because they have the word then there, and in Hebrew, then your eyes shall be opened. What does that mean? What does that mean? When Eve was walking in the garden and she saw the serpent, did she have her eyes open or closed? Open. Okay. So what does this mean? It means your spiritual eye. You see? And it's so colorful, it's so, it's so, it's so, uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean, so, so, so swami, <laughs> you know, so soupy to go, your spiritual eye. <laughs> but something evil. <laughs> your eyes shall be open and what? And you shall what? Be as God, knowing good. Evil. And they confirm it further here, it says, Now the man has become like one of us, to know good from evil. That's further down in the same chapter, in the further verses. These are cherubims talking. Now let's put man out of the garden, because now he has become like one of us. What were those cherubims then? Were they good or evil? They were evil, because man and woman, according to them, were created in the image and after the likeness of God. So they were already good. Who can be gooder than God? So what they did and what they inherited was a new attribute, evil. But in becoming evil, they became like God. Could you please explain that to me? Okay. Why are they trying to trick my mind and talk behind my back? <laughs> Why are they teaching me? A doctrine that contradicts logic and common sense and sound right reasoning. Why are they doing that to me? And why would they make you mad at me for pointing it out at you to make you see it? That man's crazy. That man talks against the Bible. That man's antichrist. That man, why? How can they get you to do that when all I'm doing is reading to you what you've been reading all your life? Right? And, I'm, and you are helping me to see the interpretation. I didn't pre-write the interpretation. You're doing this right now. And if you could read this another way, then bring your natty ass up here and do it. 
Because this we I'm reading the King James Version of the Bible. You understand? King James Version. A British Bible in America. You didn't get the drift. It should be American Bible in America. In America. Alright. And the woman, oh wait, and and when, check this, and when the woman saw that the tree, so now eyes open, now she see, that the tree was good for food. It was edible. <coughs> Nowhere in here does it say apple. There's no apple in here. Somebody stuck apple in there. In Sunday school, apple got in here. Apples are not that old. There's over a thousand species of apples. What kind of apple was it? Was it a Mac? <laughs> but if you ask that question in church, the reverend will get mad at you. The Sunday school teacher will report it to your grandmother, because your grandmother's the one who would be asked about church. Your mother just says, stop acting up. But grandma says, come here. Bring your ass over here. <laughs> you ever say that again in church? If you question, she tear you up with that switch. You know that switch I'm talking about, that singing switch. <laughs> on the planet and they had two sons came in. Where did they get their wives from? What? <laughs> you little heathen! <laughs> Go to your room! That's where it started. That's where the block got placed in. So when I start talking about you, you start going, Ouch. even you groan, you still get that sound. You, you, your mind is conditioned not to question this book. So you start saying, that man crazy. No, this man got beat so many times that his grandmother's arm got tired. And then she said, what, what, what do you want to know, boy? And she said, I don't know. And that's it. After 15,000 beatings and 250,000 whips, I said, that's all I want to know, Grandma, is that you don't know and Reverend Porkchop don't know either. That's all I want to know. Does somebody know? I don't want to tell you, you know. Who are the people in the land of God? Where did they come from? The Bible says Cain left the garden and went to the land of God. And nobody was on the planet with Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. So if you go to the land of God and nobody was there, what's and God has provided me with an audience of millions of listeners, then God must want me to talk to you. Right. He must walk to your heads now. It must be time to hear it. Right. Because right. people are coming to the waffle from all walks of life. Right. We got people in Russia, all in Malaysia. A Nigeria is a conflict going on because our people are spreading it over there and the Muslims are getting mad. All out of into Ghana, South Africa, all the way over to Japan even. They're asking will you put the books in Japanese. I said if I could I would. But I can't so I shan't. But in the event that someone does or do <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Why is it time to know the truth? Can I dwell on it a little more? Yeah. 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 Who, who was Cain afraid of killing him? When he told God, you know, the burden you put upon me for killing my brother is too great. Anyone who catches me is going to kill me. Anyone who, Cain, Nobody is on the planet except you, your father, your brother. Well, you killed your brother. He wasn't there no more. So there's your mother and father and you. Who was he afraid was going to kill him? And this opens the can of beans to the reality that the planet had people on it before Adam and Eve. Now, archaeologists and paleontologists all recognize 
recognize that. But Reverend can't teach you that. Because he'd have to give up that Catholic. Because he cannot explain who these people are. But we talked about a part of the Bible here in Genesis where it says, and the goal of that land is good. And it takes thousands of years for gold to process it. Not even more than thousands of years. For coal and earth to crush down and become diamonds. But the Bible talks about the diamonds of God. It talks about gold in Genesis. But the Christians will tell you that the Bible is not more than 6,000 years old. Stretching it in Islam to 10. But it takes millions of years for Mother Nature to make gold. So how is it in Genesis that the goal of the land of Ethiopia is good and man wasn't even on a planet a hot week in Genesis? <laughs> the planet must have existed millions of years before Adam and Eve in order for God to say the goal of that land is good. There must have been people on the planet Earth in order for Cain to, or Cain to find himself a wife. There must have been evil people before Adam and Eve and the serpent if Cain was afraid of somebody killing him yeah. who God didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. God's information was limited. God didn't even know those people. The Bible says there were giants in Genesis chapter 6. There were giants in the earth in those days. Who created the giants? Because of Adam and Eve were not the giants, and they were created in the image and after the likeness of God, then the giants were created in God. That means the giants were the law who up for not God.
uh, disagreeable side of us so that we could kind of like balance things out. Because I, rem I remember when you were saying that uh, our planet has been surrounded by a almost disagreeable crystal-like energy thing. And um, I was thinking that if we were to focus more on, the positive, on our positive nature, suppress the disagreeable, would balance things out and allow us to be able to cope with the things that's going on in this society now. But later on, once we establish uh, our state of Milwaukee, we would then be able to get back to that neutral state and then exercise both our agreeable and the disagreeable using uh, sound right reason. So is, is that what's going? Is that what's going on? Where we? Is that why we have to focus more on our well, positive nature? That probably was a little heavier than what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to me, uh, sound right reasoning is already in each of us. What has happened is all of our reasoning, our sound judgments, and most important, right decisions, has been overlaid by theatrics. Another word question is, the Inky see you redeeming himself by sending his son Murdoch, showing that he can he can do things as said to be done, or did Anu send you, my master teacher? Uh, Anu. Anu sends Inky, and Anu sends me. Inky couldn't send me anywhere. <laughs> because, though I am spiritually related to Inky as his son, you know, I reject everything Inky stands for because he opposed I knew. And it was a strong decision because I was conceived through a reptilian wife of Inky as a disagreeable, a warrior, a defender. And I had to change, okay? My whole genetic structure recalibrated so that I could work on behalf of a new, but act as a defender of the innocent at the same time. So I had to be given the ability to kill when killing is not in the Anunnaki's nature. Thus, it was necessary to be born to Eve, who is a reptilian, that I'd have a reptilian mentality as well as an Anunnaki's mentality as far as agreeable, ya, yeah, and disagreeable way. I had to have both of those attributes because this is what you have. You have both an agreeable nature and a disagreeable nature sitting in this room. And I don't mean there are some agreeable people and some disagreeable people. Everybody sitting in this room has agreeable in them and disagreeable. Everybody in there has a little devil in them, and everybody in there has a little God in them. In order for the being to come to you, to raise you up, they've got to have the kind of nature you have so that you can't trick them, because you're very good at it. <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> Nothing to just see. Don't want to triple. <laughs> Anything else? The brother from Washington who came down a long way, and people from Washington, I assume, are in the house. <laughs> you can see y'all down here. He a very good job. He's a good teacher. I know y'all learned a lot. It makes me feel good to see uh, young brothers coming up because nothing is sadder than seeing uh, a purpose destroyed because maybe the leadership harbors and controls all the information for themselves in order to look heaven. And then when they pass on, there's no one to pick up that baton and keep running. It's good to see that these young men are coming up and I'm hoping to see some young sisters get up here. Not unless young doesn't mean nothing to me though. Remember, you know how I was, you know young has nothing to do with age. <laughs> means in stages of learning. I want to see some of these young sisters get up and also teach and carry this word out because I know you know what time we are. I know you can see the world and conditions of the world. And needless to say, the clock is ticking louder than it ever ticked before. And time is running out. And I'm not going to preach doomsday. I'm not going to tell you that the end of the world is coming, the end of a kind of world is coming, the end of a kind of rulership is coming, and it's high time for it to go. So that the new world, and not new world order, but the new world can come into place with, where love rules, and not emotions. Right? What else do you want to talk to me about? Go ahead.
They took out reason and replaced it with belief. And in belief, if you try to reason out what you believe, you're usually called a blasphemer or a troublemaker. If you belong to a religious denomination, uh, let's say Christianity, for instance, for starters, and you're a devout Christian, and someone attempts to assassinate the Pope, you follow? You say that's a very sad thing. That's a very sick thing to do. That's how you see it. And that is a way to see it. But in the Wapo, the next way to see it is, why is the Pope ducking? You follow? Why would the Pope attempt not to die if the greatest of all glories is to be back in the bosom of God? And if you are the Pope, you're about as close to <laughs> the bosom of God as most or any man could possibly be. You have to ask, see what Nuwapo does is it raises that kind of question through reasoning that bothers people. Because it says, why is the Pope driving around in a bulletproof vehicle if him and God is tight? <laughs> why is he trying to tell me to be good in order to go to heaven to be with God and he don't want to go to heaven? <laughs> Billy Graham passed out giving a lecture and he's on his fourth collapse. His fourth collapse. And he is fighting to live. He is trying to live. He's got all kind of tubes in him and breathing machines and 